So JavaScript is a single threaded programming language. That means everything happens on that single main thread. It can do multiple things at the same time. Web workers solve that issue. So web workers are basically a separate thread which give us the possibility to write multi-threaded JavaScript, which does not block the DOM. Web workers cannot perform any kind of DOM manipulation as they don't have access to the window or the DOM object. However, they have access to the location, the navigator, the fetch API, and the cache and import scripts. Let's understand web, how a web worker work with an example. So what we have here are two buttons, uh, a calculate sum and change background. So calculate sum will be a high complexity task that will take some time to perform and button change. All it does is just change the background color of the body. So on clicking the sum button, a heavy computation task will be performed and uh, the result will be shown in the alert box. And on clicking the background button, the background color of a body will change. So the issue with this is when I click on the background change background button, the color is changing. But if I click on the calculate sum button, now I cannot click on the change background button because our main thread is busy in performing that high computation task. And only when that task is completed, then only that this background color will change. So now this task is completed and now we can again change the color. So web workers solve this issue. Let's see how. So the syntax to create a new instance of a web worker is like this. You write worker equals to new worker and then you provide the path to the web worker script, which in our case is this file. Right now it's empty. So we'll provide the path to this file. We'll write the name of this file. webwork.js and then um, how can we pass data or messages back and forth from our script to our web worker file and vice versa so for that we need two things so first is the post message so using this post message we can pass data from our script to the web worker file and vice versa and uh, and uh, we also need a on message event handler to listen for those messages that we are getting Let's see how we can do this. So first we need to create a on message event. Right now, uh, all we need to do is uh, just alert the data as we are doing in this case. So first we need to get the data. We'll store this in a variable data and we can get that using the dot data property. And now we can just alert this data that we are getting from the web worker. Let's also write uh, on error event in case we get any error during this whole process. And we'll just console.log that error. Now to uh, send the data or send a message from our script to a web worker, we need to use that post message method. So if we just comment this thing and we'll write worker dot post message and uh, let's just pass it a object will uh, with key as do and value as sum. So this is it. All we need to do in our script file. Now let's move to the web worker file here also we need to add an on message event same thing we did earlier we need to get the data that is passed to our web worker uh, which we can get inside the data property but we have passed an object here uh, with the key do so let's add that key also to get that exact value sum and let's write a switch case here based on the data and uh, let's write our case first case sum so if it is a sum what we need want to do we get this whole computation and we paste it here so let me just uncomment it 
and instead of showing an alert we'll uh, return that data back to the script file using the post message so we'll just write self dot post message in our web worker file as well and we'll pass the data that is the sum variable uh, let's also write a default case in case we provide any wrong value so all we'll do is in this case is just console dot log invalid value and uh, we'll pass a message to back to the script file that uh, we are closing the web worker and we'll just write self dot close oh we forgot to add the break statement here Now if we go back to our browser and refresh the window, we click on the sum button. Now we are able to change the background because that computation task is handled by the web worker in the background. Soon we'll get the alert message here. So this is the result. Now as we now as I told you before that uh, web worker can also make fetch API request. Let's see one example of that as well. So if we go back to our web worker file and add one more case here of fetch and just paste the code here. So all this is doing is uh, making an API call to JSON placeholder API and uh, fetching the data and returning the first index data using the post message back to our script file. So let's add one more button here. Let's call it fetch data and give it a id of fetch btn just copy this add one event more event listener to this button document dot get element by id fetch btn dot add event listener click and on click of this event listener we want to again pass a message to our web worker file and in, uh, this time instead of sum we want to send the message of fetch and on the on message instead of showing the alert what we want to do we want to change the we want to change the text content of this pre tag so if I get this and add the text content equals to data or title. Now if we save this, now if we go back and click here, we get a console message about to fetch for the data and we get the data here. Now let's see what a shared worker is. A normal web worker is accessible and connected to one single script and cannot post messages to other scripts or workers. A shared worker on the other hand is accessible by multiple scripts even if they are being accessed by different windows, iframes or even workers. So what we have here are two different HTML pages and if we open them we will see they both have one thing in common. It's the same calculate sum button which we use for a web worker. Uh, this first one is uh, exactly same the same page that we used in our web worker example the other one also have this calculate some button but it is running an animation here so if we click on this calculate some button what will happen is our animation would get stuck because uh, our main thread is busy in performing that computational task and this animation will only continue when the computation task is completed yep so let's see how we can fix this using a shared worker the syntax to create a shared worker is very similar to a normal web worker so let's first create a variable here called worker let's create a new instance of a shared worker so by writing 
new shared worker and then provide the path to our web worker script which is webwork.js now in case of shared worker also we'll use the post message and on message handler to uh, communicate between the worker and the script but there's a difference for a shared worker we have to communicate via port object an explicit port is open that the scripts can use to communicate with the worker this port connection will implicitly start when we use the on message event handler what i mean by that is instead of just writing worker dot on message we have to write worker dot port dot on message and then we'll do the same thing we did uh, in case of our normal web worker we'll just get the data using ev dot data and right now we'll just console dot log it similarly for uh, using post message instead of writing uh, directly worker dot post message we'll write worker dot port dot post message and we'll pass the data which is will be an object with do as a key and sum as a value that's all we need to do in this script now let's move to the worker file so here the approach will be a bit different in case of a shared worker first we need to start an on connect handler which will be a function so this on connect handler will fire the code uh, when a connection to the port happens which means when the on message event handler when the on message event handler in the parent script is set up so first inside uh, this on connect let's get the port using e dot ports at zero now inside this uh, on connect method we have to listen for the on message event uh, so in case of a normal web worker we use self dot on message but uh, here in case of shared worker we have to write port dot on message now uh, everything will be same as it was so we'll get the data from ev dot data dot do and we'll write a switch statement based on the data we'll write a first case which will be a sum inside that sum we'll get this computation task we'll cut it from here and paste it in our shared worker file now uh, we have to use post message to uh, send back the data from our shared worker to the script file but uh, instead of writing self dot post message here we have to write port dot post message remember uh, in case of shared worker we have to use this dot port and now here we return the the data that is the sum let's also write uh, let's write the break let's also write the default condition so here we'll just console dot log invalid value okay that's it now uh, let's just also uh, copy this thing in our animate.jss file as well so that both are index 1.html and index 2.html uh, they are linked to uh, index.html is linked to app.js and index 2.html is linked to animate.js these both js files should be able to communicate to this common shared worker so let's also create a variable here and instead of doing the computation here we'll use the post message pass the data to, our, to the shared worker okay yeah that's it now if we go to our browser and if i click on calculate sum so our animation is still continuing on because the heavy task is handled by the shared worker now and the result is printed here and our animation is still going on same if we go to this other file if i click on calculate sum and change background so this is also working and we are getting the result as well because our main thread is not now not occupied because the heavy task is handled by the shared worker that's what that so that was all about the web worker and the shared worker Thank you for watching.